And that was your closing bell sponsored by Tastyworks, the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, all finishing well in the green. The Dow 434 point game, the NASDAQ up 2.7% on this Thursday. For more on the markets, let's bring in Michael Weiss, Yield Street founder and president, and Ahmad Riesco, Insignia Chief Investment Officer. Nice to see you both. Sometimes the markets are just flat out confusing. Michael, what do you make of the sea of green, in particular with the tech heavy NASDAQ? I think it's uh, it's it's typical for where we are in the market. We're going to see a sea of green tomorrow and a bloodbath of red the day after. I think that we continue to see a lot of volatility in the market. Investor sentiment is poor. Global equities, fixed income, and crypto are you know continuing to experience turbulent times. I don't think today is an indication that sentiment is back. I don't think today is an indication that our toughest days this year are behind us. Ahmed, what do you think? I mean, do you think we'll see a lot of volatility? How Michael put it, potential bloodbath. Are the toughest days behind us? What's your view? Yeah, I agree with him that tactically here, uh, the market is set up for volatility. Technically, it doesn't look great. And like he said, investor sentiment is still quite negative. But we actually think that in the medium to longer term, six to 12 months out, uh, the picture actually looks a lot brighter. So I think once we weather this period of volatility, I think the outlook, especially for the second half of the year, looks very attractive in certain equity markets out there. Uh, Michael, your notes say you thought Jamie Dimon's comments about an economic hurricane were, quote, quote, theatrical. What do you make of Goldman President John Waldron saying the confluence of the number of shocks to the system to me is unprecedented? I don't think those two comments are the same. I do think that the number of shocks to the system are unprecedented. I don't think that we are going to see a hurricane per se. I agree that I think maybe 12 to 18 months out, we're going to see a stronger market. I think the American consumer is healthier than it was even pre-crisis levels. Our banks are better capitalized, but I think we need to see some really important data points come out. The Ukrainian war needs to find a resolution. Inflation in Europe and China have to get tamed. The Chinese government held a video conference recently, I think with about 100,000 officials that are talking about you know, creating a plan to stabilize the economy. We need some better answers, but I do feel that the, the overall health of the US consumer and 12 months out from now, maybe 18 months out from now, we're going to see a stronger market. But I think right now, the investor should really be thinking about moving outside of public equities and trying to find better investment solutions to not have to deal with the volatility and to generate the right returns. Ahmed, we got some comments uh, this morning from Fed Vice Chair Lael Brainerd, and she went on to say that she doesn't see the case for pausing rate hikes at least through the fall. Is this something that you think is the economy strong enough? Will the market be able to withstand a continuous rate hike cycle? Yeah, so I think the question we all have to ask ourselves is, is the Fed going to tighten more than what is already priced in? Uh, right now, as we speak, the market is priced in a 2.8 percent federal uh, Fed funds rate for the end of the year. If the Fed is going to hike to that level or below, then you will see markets rally. But if it's going to keep increasing or keep pushing that number further out, then you could see further volatility there. So I think you know, the comments today, uh, it's understandable that they make comments like that because they really are data dependent. Um, I think we're going to need to see a sustained drop in, you know, key inflation indicators and figures before they can at least take their foot off the gas in terms of the hiking cycle. So Ahmed, you see two 50 point hikes and then a 25 and then we'll see, is that what you project? Yeah, I don't think the Fed's gonna have to tie in by much more than what is already priced in, which is why we sort of have that six to 12 month pretty sanguine outlook on US equity markets. And we've actually turned pretty neutral. We've been you know, pretty bearish treasuries here for a while. We do think uh, we started a, a, a long-term structural bear market in treasuries, but I think we're, we're gonna see a period of consolidation where we're more neutral on treasuries right now. And I think part of that is a sort of peak Fed uh, hawkishness uh, a thesis that you're seeing out there, which I do think has some legs, has some credibility to it because we are starting to see figures coming out that are pointing to inflation subsiding just as we expected in the second half of the year. Michael, what do you think just in terms of how much of the Fed's tightening plan has already been priced into the markets? I think there's, a, there's two outlier events that are, you know, or maybe one specific and, and one that I'm not sure is priced in yet. I believe there's still about $2.1 um, trillion dollars of stimulus that hasn't hit the street yet. I think 950 of it is targeting municipalities and local governments. I think that we're going to see worse inflation before it gets better. I think that's number one. Number two, 
I am of the opinion that the 2024 elections are going to play a significant role in how this administration chooses to, you know, maybe say influence the impact of, of inflation and, you know, certain key economic issues that we have going on here. And I'm not sure that we're talking about that enough. I think if the Democrats want a chance to win, they're not going to be able to uh, to do that with this type of sentiment. And so they're going to have to do whatever it takes to bring the U.S. consumer to feel healthier about their current state of financing, their jobs, their inflation, the cost of goods. And we're not seeing that discussion happen yet. A change of power looking awfully likely at this juncture. Ahmed, do you agree with that assessment that inflation could get worse before it gets better? Most are pointing to some signs that they think it's peaked. I mean, it's possible, obviously, but we don't think it's likely. In fact, uh, the sort of data that we're looking at already shows is that we are, if not at peak inflation, we're very near that peak. We've seen sort of second and third derivative uh, uh, numbers and figures that we follow showing us that there has been a deceleration. There even has been a deceleration in wage gains, uh, which is good to see in terms of the overall inflation picture. Remember, it's very difficult to get a sustained inflationary uptick without wages really driving that. Um, and, and we're starting to see that. So we're, we're pretty confident in the fact that inflation is either at or very near peak, and it is gonna go down. Now, let me be clear. I'm not saying that inflation is gonna go back down to the levels that it was before COVID. That's not gonna be the case. In fact, we think we're starting a multi-year period where inflation is gonna be systemically higher than it has been over the previous 10, 20 years. Uh, but it's not going to be at these levels. Uh, right now, we're sort of projecting inflation to end the year at you know somewhere between four and five percent. Obviously, that's much higher than the inflation that the Fed wants to target. But the point is that we're seeing these numbers coming down, and that's going to allow the Fed to take its foot off the gas. Keep this in mind: a lot of tightening of financial conditions has already occurred. In fact, the Fed has tightened financial conditions just as quickly as it loosened conditions during the pandemic. That is an extraordinary amount of tightening. Remember, tightening just does not occur from Fed rate hikes. It occurs from the drop in equity markets. It occurs from uh, the widening out of credit spreads. Several, you know, several things go into what are called financial conditions, and those have tightened significantly already. There's a lot more to talk about here. Unfortunately, we're out of time, so we're going to have to have both of you back. But Ahmed Riesco and Michael Weiss, thanks so much for joining us today.